Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we are taking a look at not one, but two GeForce RTX 3090 graphics cards. Because why not? I guess I'm just ripping the band-aid off with this one and condensing all the what's the point of this review, we can't buy them anyway comments into a single video. So on hand for testing we have the absurdly massive Gigabyte Aorus RTX 3090 Extreme. Now, this is basically the same design as the 3080 model that I looked at recently. And then, put that down, we have the Gigabyte RTX 3090 Gaming OC. And again, this is basically the same design as the 3080 Gaming OC that I looked at not that long ago. Let's quickly take a look at each model before jumping in to the results. Now, normally I'd call a card as big as the Gaming OC a very large high-end graphics card because by normal high-end graphics card standards, well, it very much is. However, sitting next to the Aorus Extreme, it certainly doesn't look that that impressive, that high end. Not not very massive, and especially when you compare them side on. Like that. In terms of dimensions, they both measure 320 millimeters long, but whereas the gaming OC stands 129 millimeters tall, the extreme is 140 millimeters tall. So that's almost 10% taller. The real difference though, as I noted a moment ago, is the width. The Gaming OC is a fairly typical 55mm wide triple slot design. The Extreme though is an insane 4 slot card measuring 70mm wide. So almost 30% wider, making it the beefiest graphics card I've ever seen. All in all, that means that the volume of the Aorus Extreme is 38% larger, and therefore it probably won't surprise you to learn that it weighs exactly 38% more at 1884 grams versus 1370 grams. Now, normally I'd spend the next 15 minutes or so going over each card's design, the cooling and PCB for example, but since we've kind of done that already with both models using the RTX 3080 versions, let's skip that and just get on with the testing. The coolers in particular are exactly the same with the only minor changes being made to the PCB. For example, there are a few extra power stages to help deal with the added power draw. And of course, there are many more GDDR6 memory chips to achieve that 24 gigabyte capacity. But beyond that, if you want to learn more about the cooling and the design of these cards, then please refer to the RTX 3080 reviews. I'll be sure to link those in the video description. Now, in terms of clock specifications, Gigabyte lists a core clock frequency of 1755 MHz for the gaming OC and 1860 MHz for the Aorus Extreme. So out of the box, I'm expecting the four slot monster to clock just 6% higher. As for the GDDR6 memory, both run at the default 19.5 gigabits per second spec set by Nvidia. And this is very typical as AIBs aren't allowed to play around with the memory spec. Kicking the testing off, I ran the Gaming OC in Shut Off the Tomb Raider for 30 minutes with the graphics card installed inside the Corsair Obsidian 500D, which has been fully populated with case fans. There's three 120mm models in the front, then two 140mm exhaust fans at the top, as well as a rear 120mm exhaust fan. Also, please note all testing has been conducted with a closely monitored room temperature of 21 degrees. Under these conditions, the Gaming OC peaked to 66 degrees, which is remarkable really, especially given the 1800 RPM fan speed, which saw the card operate at just 41 decibels. This saw the card maintain a core clock frequency of 1875 MHz, so higher than that of the large Founders Edition model. Now, for the massive Aorus Extreme, this model appears far less impressive, at least in terms of operating temperature and volume. The bigger four slot card actually ran at four degrees hotter, peaking at 70 degrees, and for me, this was made all the more disappointing given how much louder it was operating at 48 decibels with a fan speed of just over 2400 RPM. The cores did manage to clock higher at 1890 MHz, though that is less than a 1% increase, so I find it unlikely that many of you will find the increased fan speed and operating temperatures justifiable. So having been disappointed with the stock OC BIOS, I switched over to the silent BIOS, and here the card ran even hotter, hitting 74 degrees, though that was to be expected, and is of course due to the lower fan speed, which was dropped down to 2000 RPM. Here the card generated 41 decibels of noise, and was noticeably quieter. That said, the core clock frequency was also reduced to 1755 MHz on average, a 7% drop in frequency, so again, quite a disappointing result overall. Now, when manually overclocking, I was able to push the gaming OC cores up to 1830 MHz, which admittedly is a very poor overclock and just a 4% boost over the factory OC. 
In game, this resulted in an average core clock frequency of 1965 MHz, and that's a 5% increase from what was seen previously. Certainly not an amazing RTX 3090 overclock, but also not really that far off the very best results we've seen. As you might have expected to see, the Aorus Extreme, which uses binned silicon, was capable of a higher overclock, hitting 1985 MHz, which translated to an average in-game GPU boost frequency of 2055 MHz. So a further 5% over what the gaming OC achieved. Again, not amazing, but that's about all you're able to extract from these new Ampere GPUs. Okay, so let's move into the benchmark graphs. As usual, we'll be testing with our AMD Ryzen 9 3950X GPU test rig with 32GB of DDR4, 3200CL14 memory. Though please note, for this testing, there is no difference in performance between the 3950X and 5950X, as we are entirely GPU limited. Now, as usual with these custom AIB graphics card reviews, we're not going to look at loads of gaming benchmarks. In fact, Shot of the Tomb Raider will do it. If you want loads of benchmarks, then please do watch our day one review or any of the head-to-head -head benchmark videos that we've done since then. The focus here is on thermals, power, and overclocking. Starting with the 1440p data in Shot of the Tomb Raider, we see that out of the box, the Aorus Extreme was just 1% faster than the gaming OC, which is roughly in line with the observed frequency difference between these two models. So I'd say in terms of stock performance, the Aorus Extreme is very disappointing given that it runs not just hotter, but also louder than the gaming OC. Now, when it came time to manually overclock these graphics cards, we did see the Aorus Extreme clock 5% higher, and surprise, surprise, that resulted in a 5% performance advantage. Again, not exactly an earth-shattering difference. The 4K data is very similar. The Aorus Extreme is 2% faster out of the box and 5% faster once both models are manually overclocked to the max. So in terms of FPS performance, both models are very similar, though I do suspect I've received a particularly bad gaming OC sample in terms of OC headroom, so this is likely going to be a best case scenario for the Aorus Extreme. Okay, so now for a quick look at power consumption, I feel this is the main issue with the Aorus Extreme. Stock out of the box, the Aorus Extreme is seen to be using 17% more power when compared to the gaming OC. And while that might not sound like a lot, a 63 watt increase is substantial, and I'll talk more about that towards the end of the video. With both overclocked, the Aorus Extreme still consumed 15% more power, and that's a big increase when you consider just how extreme the power requirements are for a stock RTX 3090. It's also well worth noting that we're now dumping what is essentially 455 watts of heat into the computer case from just the graphics card. And as we move on to look at the thermal results again, keep in mind that we are testing inside an ATX case and not an open test bench. Okay, so stock the Aorus Extreme saw a peak GPU temperature of 70 degrees, which is really quite good, but remember the fan speed here was also very high. The Gaming OC, on the other hand, saw its fan spinning 25% slower, and despite that, the card ran 4 degrees cooler, peaking at just 66 degrees. Now, the real issue here can be seen when noise normalizing these graphics cards. We see no change in temperature for the Gaming OC, as it was already operating at 41 decibels, so the slight drop in fan speed to achieve 40 decibels didn't increase the GPU temperature. The Aorus Extreme, though, saw a massive 13 degree increase in operating temperature, and this is much worse than what we saw with the Silent Bias. And the reason for this being that we're not lowering the power target, the cores are still operating at 1890 megahertz. So when you consider that the Aorus Extreme is really no faster than the ASUS Strix Gaming or MSI Gaming X Trio, and those models ran even cooler than the Gaming OC, it's hard not to be disappointed with the Aorus Extreme. Moving on to look at the VRM temperatures, which I measured using a series of K-type thermocouples, we again find that out of the box, the Gaming OC and Aorus Extreme are very similar. In fact, the Gaming OC VRM ran three degrees hotter, but again, keep in mind that there is a big difference in terms of operating volume. So with the card's noise normalized, we see that the Gaming OC VRM ran eight degrees cooler, which isn't a particularly great result relative to the other models, but it's certainly better than the more premium Aorus Extreme. This is perhaps the most concerning data yet, though out of the box with its higher fan speed, the Aorus Extreme did work just fine, albeit it was much louder than the other models tested. Stock, the memory still ran three degrees cooler on the gaming OC, but it's the noise normalized results that are most concerning. Here the memory peaked at 97 degrees on the Aorus Extreme, and that's 17 degrees hotter than what we saw with Nvidia's Founders Edition model. At 97 degrees, the internal temperature of the GDDR6 chips has to be near critical levels, which is probably why the fan spins so fast by default. Now, you might be wondering, why is the memory on the Aorus Extreme so hot relative to the other models, especially given that they all use the exact same GDDR6X memory 
operating at the same frequency. The problem here is again the increased power usage of the GPU. Much of that heat is dumped directly into the PCB where it's very difficult to extract. This bakes the surrounding memory chips, especially those on the rear side of the PCB where much of the heat ends up. The only real counter here is to rapidly increase the fan speed, pushing more air over the base of the heatsink as well as the PCB itself. So in summary, out of the box, the Aorus Extreme is just 1-2% to faster than the Gaming OC, but it also makes a lot more noise due to a 25% increase in fan speed to deal with the 15-20% to increase in power usage. And worse still, when compared to the more premium models from the likes of ASUS and MSI, the Aorus Extreme is no faster. But again, it also makes more noise because it consumes a good bit more power. Unfortunately, even overclocked, the Aorus Extreme doesn't exactly end up in a field of its own. Here it was just 5% faster than the gaming OC, and again, it consumed much more power, resulting in higher operating temperatures and a greater noise output. The problem with the Aorus Extreme was really highlighted with the noise normalized testing, which doesn't neutralize the difference in power usage, as we can't really do that without tanking clock speeds. So you might be wondering why does pushing power consumption up by a further 15 to 20 percent result in much higher operating temperatures when noise normalized? Shouldn't this 38 percent bigger and heavier heatsink offset the increased power usage? You'd think so, but there is a thermal bottleneck here. The surface area of the GPU die doesn't increase with the larger cooler, so we're dealing with the exact same size thermal hotspot. And there is a point where you simply cannot extract the heat fast enough, at least using conventional materials. Both models make contact with the silicon using a copper base, and of course a thermal compound to take up any air gaps, thermal dead zones let's say. The Aorus Extreme does include a vapour chamber, which will help spread the thermal output across a larger section of the base, improving efficiency, but that will only get you so far, and the interface material used to suck the heat away from the die remains the same. It's of course still copper. So with GPUs like the RTX 3090 by default already pushed well beyond their efficiency window, increasing the power usage by a further 15-20% to makes it extremely difficult to extract that additional heat output from the relatively small 628mm squared die. Again, what we're looking at here is a thermal bottleneck, and no matter how large you make the heatsink itself, the contact point with the die is going to be the primary bottleneck. The next step here would to be use a water block, and while you are still using copper to extract the heat, it's much easier to directly cool the copper base with water, as you're no longer relying on a series of heat pipes to transfer heat away from the base and move it through a large array of fins. In short, while the Aorus Extreme heatsink is 38% larger, it's not 38% better as it still has to suck heat away from the same size surface area, and without significantly improving thermal extraction, you're not going to see significantly better thermal results. This then makes the Aorus Extreme a bit of a pointless product in my opinion. Yes, it is designed for overclockers, and yes, it does overclock better than the gaming OC, but for most of you, the trade-offs simply won't be worth the mere 5% increase in performance. Therefore, I'd much prefer the Aorus Extreme if it used the Gaming OC BIOS and had the same power limits. It still wouldn't be 38% better, but there certainly would be some thermal and noise improvements with the larger cooler. If you really want an extreme RTX 3090 graphics card for overclocking, I'd be looking at the Aorus Extreme Water Force. It uses a 240mm AIO and I suspect it'll make far more sense. Otherwise, you're just far better off buying something like the Gaming OC in my opinion, and I've got to say this much more modest graphics card really impressed me. In terms of quality, it's every bit as good as MSI's Gaming X Trio, and therefore I wouldn't hesitate to recommend the Gigabyte RTX 3090 Gaming OC. Assuming you can find one and you want to dump just an absolutely absurd amount of money on a graphics card. Actually, on that note for gamers, I strongly suggest you hold out and just buy the Gigabyte RTX 3080 Gaming OC. It is an excellent graphics card and you can find our review for it in the video description. And that is going to do it for this one. If you liked the video, you can like it. You can also subscribe, all that YouTube stuff that we often talk about. Also, if you'd like to become a Hardware Unbox community member, then you can join us over at Floatplane or Patreon. The links for those are in the video description. That will give you access to our exclusive Discord server where you can chat with Tim and myself and the rest of the awesome Hardware Unbox community. Tim and myself also do a live stream each month. We talk to you guys about whatever it is you want us to talk about, whatever's happened in the month, I suppose. Behind the scenes content. Uh, what am I feeling? Q&As, a lot of cool stuff. If you're interested, as I said, links are in the video description. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.